this is Kyber from YCG, your casual gamer. Time to continue our training on the sequencer. So in this episode, we're going to learn how to recreate that sequence that we just saw uh, using cameras and also how to switch from one to another and also how to add some fade-ins. Furthermore, we're going to add some simple sound effect inside our sequence and see the whole thing show in front of us. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm in my scene over here. Hopefully you have yourself a scene. I did a little something with the start content, really nothing crazy over here. Let's start our sequence. So we go inside cinematic, add level sequence, inside sequencer, I'm gonna set it to fade in uh, scene, just so I can uh, remember and come back to it. And then again, it's gonna open your sequencer window. If you don't have it, just I'm bringing it down over here so that we can see everybody together what we do. So when working with your scene, sometimes you might want to hide everything you see. Right now we see the lights and everything's always in the way. If I press the J key while inside the viewport, it's going to remove everything in sight. Remember to re-click it if you want to be able to see what you're doing in your sequencer because even the cameras that you're going to add are going to be hidden. So right here I'm going to set up for my first shot. I'm going to show you guys the best way to uh, get started. So say this is where I want my first shot to be. I'm going to click over here and it's going to create a new camera cut. And right away, with the camera cut, you're going to be able to see that you have this that's going to be in charge of your scene. And then you have your first camera that's going to be already set up, ready to start. I'm not going to go through this over here. I'm only going to stay with the spawn and transform for today. Because that's all, all we're going to need to make our scene. So first off, I'm on auto key over here. So I'm going to set up my first key over here. If you want to control the camera that you're on it, just make sure you click and unclick. You can unclick and you're going to be able to move and you're going to see your cameras right over here. If I click again, I'm going to be on the camera ready to move. Now I'm going to say my first movement is going to be about 90 sec, 90 frame, which is 30 frame per second, so about 3 seconds. So just not to waste your time, I'm not going to make it too long. And then I'm going to go in and let's say I want this to go like this and then look up. And I just let go and you're going to see that it's going to make the smooth transition between the two. That's simple to make the camera move. And we're done the first shot. So if this is where the first one's going to stop, so make sure to put a, a note over here on the spawn. So this over here, and then it's going to be spawn till we get to 90. And then we're going to switch camera. So I'm going to put another note over here and uncheck it. Just to make sure that you don't have anything that's loaded in your scene that is not required. You're going to take the little uh, bar over here and you're going to bring it down to 90. And it's going to snap if you have the snapping tool on. Now control middle button uh, drag, we're going to make the scene a bit bigger. If you want to move it along your scene, you can just shift and right click uh, inside your uh, sequence. Bring it to 660. We're going to come back to this. And then we move on. So control, drag back. All right. So the first way to add a camera, very simple. That's the first way. Second way is, let's say you already have a camera in the scene. So let's make a camera. Add it to your scene. And then we're going to position it. If you want to have a best way to position it, I right click on it and I pilot it. That way you can position it where you want your shot to be. This is where I want it to. I want to focus on this ball over here. So that's perfect. I got this over here. Now, let's say, uh, just uncheck this if you want to stop piloting. And let's say you want to move from there. So now we have the camera, but it's not inside our sequence. So to add it, you can right click add to actor, you can go get the camera over here, but it's not going to be, well, that's one way to do it, but you can also add it over here directly. So if I click over here and I add new binding, get the camera, you're going to see that right away it adds the camera. And if I check on the cut now, I can move and you're going to see that right away it jumps to the next one. So that's a way to add your own camera. Now to uh, make sure that it's not spawn at the beginning, the camera again, just to keep our scene uh, clean, I'm going to go back to 90 over here. I'm going to right click on this one over here and convert it to spawnable. Save frequently. That way it updates everything. So at the beginning, we're going to add a cut. We're going to add a key. Make it on spawn. And as soon as you reach to 90, we're going to add another key. You can press enter also to add your keys. Uh, but uh, you have to be selected on the, on the track. And then just click it spawned. And this is where it's going to make the switch. Okay, and you're going to see right away if I'm there and I press play, now it's going to do the. Oh, I wasn't locked on it. What? So you go here, get the camera cut, press play, and that, okay, perfect. So it did what I thought it would do over here. 
when you convert it to spawnable, for some reason, it unlocks it to the uh, camera cuts over here. So you're gonna need to re-add the camera actor over here. So that way you can restart making your scene. And you see, now I'm ready to continue. Now I'll click on the transform, the track, and we're gonna move on from here. Add a key over here. And when you move on, let's say I do another three seconds, I'm gonna move on to 180. And I'm gonna move. So make sure to be, okay, I'm on my camera. I'm piloting it, it says on top. I'm gonna move forward. And let's say I'm gonna stop right over here. I let go, and then I go back, and you're gonna see that it is done. But now you're gonna notice one thing is that as soon as, uh, oh yeah, you can do that. Oh, I didn't even know that. You can play with this over here if you want to make your scene smaller on each side. I was always using the control and the middle button. It's good to know there's options. So now you're gonna see it over here, if I am on the camera cut, that it's gonna be right away jumping to the next one. And that's not too pretty. So from here, we're gonna add our fades. So very simple, add to track, fade track, and right away, we're gonna go back to the beginning. So if you want, you can add a, a uh, something, you can even move with your arrow key. As soon as you click on, on this over here, you can move the arrow key to move around, to be more precise on your uh, frames. And you can even uh, set your frames right over here multiple way to move inside uh, your sequencer. So first off, you want the scene to start from black. So black being one, enter. Then you move forward, let's say over here, I press enter and I want this one to be at zero. Then I'm gonna move forward and from here there's gonna be another one and then I'm gonna put it over here. Oh, it's a fast fade, I'm gonna move it down. I'm going to clean all this up after. Here I'm going to add another one, put it to one, enter. Then you move back forward. And really simple over here, as soon as you have your first few ones, you can select what you want, alt, drag, copy, and you're back inside. And then you can go whoop, and then you can see it goes very smooth. So if I press J to see what I want to see, then I can just check the scene already, what it looks like. I have the first one, makes the fade, goes to the second one, and then I could add another fade over here. So that's two way of adding cameras. The third way is, well, I like to use it this way. You could use the same camera. Why not? I mean, you're doing a fade anyway. So from here, I know this is my end point over here. I can select the transform node and make sure you're on this one. Perfect. Uh, this is where, this is where, no, it's not where I finish. I finish on this frame, 180. So now let's say my next frame, I'm going to go up to, I don't know, up to here, but I want my camera to be all the way down there and ready for my last shot. I set up my last shot. There you go. I let go. And then, well, you know, technically it would work if you have a nice fade. So now I'm going to set up my last scene and then we're going to add the fade and you'll see that everything works. So that's just to give you guys tools. After that, you guys decide what you want to do after. So when you do your last scene, what I like to do is uh, I, I put my starter shot and then I make a blocking of what I want it to be. So if I move up to this here, I want the camera to be here and then I keep going and then I want this to go up and then to move down to look down upon this. And then I continue over here and then I want it to finish all the way in the corner over here and look over the scene from up high like this. And then my last move, well, then let's add the fade and then uh, let's, uh, well, you guys understand right here, I could add alt drag copy of the fade right over here. And as long as the movement of the camera is hidden, I mean, it's not the perfect practice, but nobody's gonna notice if you're inside the camera cut and I just press play, you nobody's gonna notice that I just did that. I moved the camera away. People are going to think I switched camera, but I kept the same one. It might not be the best practice. Maybe it's better to always switch from cameras, but now you have the tools to do whatever you want with it. Now I got my scene, and the last thing I wanted to show you guys, it's a little bug. They call it a, it's not really a bug. It's called a gimbal lock. And from here at the end, I want, so I'm going to move a little bit more, and I want my camera to look on the right. So now I have to be selected on the camera and on the track. So then I can move on the right and I want to look at this uh, ball over here. So then you're going to see that if I do that, look at what the camera does. So you saw my movement and what what is coming on the screen over here on the viewport, it's not really what I 
wanted to do. And by looking online, like always, I like to look online so that you guys have the research behind everything cut down to you. So you don't have to waste your time going, oh, why did this happen to me and not him? Well, you're going to see that it happens to me too. Uh, the way that I fix this, there's no real fix it. You can go look look it up. It's called gimbal lock. It's basically two axes that are in uh, limbo. And then the third one does whatever it wants to get to the point where you want to. So the easy fix for me or the workaround that I use is oh, I'm not adding keys right now. Oh, okay, it's good. Oh, I could. Uh, uh, yeah, I am adding keys. Just that. I lose my shot. There you go. So from there, I'm gonna delete this over here. Go back to the point where you wanted your uh, thing to happen, and you have to do that manually. If you go manually, then you're gonna be fine. If I go like this, I look to the right, I look up. And if I go back, you're going to notice that the camera knows where it's going now. And this is probably because I went manually, so now it understands the trajectory I'm trying to use. And it's not trying to do that 180 that it was doing before when I did it on auto key. So now we have our sequence done. Okay, so uh, I added this, the fade and everything. Now I'm going to speed up the video, clean up my scene so that we can have it really nice and uh, dandy. Then we're going to add it to the uh, level blueprint so we can uh, look at it together and add some sound. So let's go. add the sound right away so sound um, it's going to be in the link below I really didn't go I, I went to get a few chorus online and I just made a sound cue with it very simple I added the two sounds in here so very simple is just you can just drag your sound once you bring it inside over here and then I just made a random with a modulator uh, played a lot with the pitch and the sound because originally they're really 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 loud and I couldn't hear myself when uh, I had them so I just did that and after that, you, you, you have a randomizer inside, so it's pretty simple after that. So to add sound, again, very simple, you add a... You could have them in your level blueprint and decide when you want to trigger them. But I, for this example, audio track, I add it over here. And then right away, you click on the sound you want to add. You click on audio. Uh, you could have right away your my, my course is there. I think you could even drag it. Yeah, you can, def you can literally drag them in and it's going to go right away where your timeline is. And then I can just bring it here. Again, it's all the same thing as the uh, fade in. So I'm not gonna waste too much time on this. You're gonna see, I'm gonna do the first one and then you guys can decide how you wanna do the rest. So you have this, it goes in, and then you can set up a, um, you can set up a key and you open, open it up. You have the pitch, the volume that you can play with. And let's say I wanna put the volume, uh, leave it to one over here. And then as soon as it gets to there, I put it to uh, zero. And it's going to make a nice little uh, fade. Like a, it's probably going to be loud. Let's go see what it is. And there you go. See? Very simple. And then you just copy this and drag it all the time. And I really like this, this one. I really like this one. So I'm just going to drag it over here. And have it over there. And then just do the same thing over and over. Okay? All right. So now the sound is all set up. Uh, I really did everything like I told you. I just added the sound. You can go get them. It's in the link in the description below. And you can just add them like this. Now everything is done for the sequence. Before we look at it, let's add it to our scenes. I'm going to close the sequencer. And it should be... Oh, yeah, I'm going to press J to see everything. So now I have this over here. I like to keep it in the middle of the scene. That way I know this one is the master of this scene. Because if you have one over here, see I have one for the lift that we did in the last episode. But it's going to be in the way if you start putting them all over the place. And you can even name them and whatnot. So now to add it to the scene, very simple. We're going to go inside the level blueprint, persistent. You can open the level blueprint on top over here. If ever you don't know how to use the level tab. And the level tab is you can be activated right over here. So now we go. I'm going to do a event begin uh, play. I have the um, sequencer selected. And I'm going to right click over here. 
and create a reference. Then we just just play sequence, and you're going to see that it's right there. Sequence to player, play. Now we are ready to go. And if I go right away and I press play, it's going to work. But now you're going to see that in the middle of the screen, you have the crosshair. So how do we get rid of this? Quite simple. It's called the HUD display. And it's inside the blueprints over here, first person HUD. When you double click inside, you have some VR stuff that you don't mind over here. This is what you care for. You don't want this to be drawn uh, if you have a scene being played. So we're going to add a condition over here. So press Alt B and left click to make a branch. From the drag, you're going to promote it to variable and call it hide HUD. Oops, not hub. HUD. Heads up display. Right here, if it's false, then you can draw it. If it's true, you don't want it to draw it. Make sure that it's off by default. And then on your first over here, first thing you're going to do over here is, uh, well, first off, if you want to make your scene really well, you're going to have to disable input. So I could disable input because you want your player to be able to move while this is happening, or you could literally break your game. So from here, get player character, and then here, get player controller. So right here off the bat, it's going to disable the character to move. And you guess it, after your uh, sequence is played, make sure to re-enable re -enable the, uh, the input. So you can do enable input afterward. Now from the player controller, you can do get HUD. Oops. Get HUD. And then do a cast. Cast to first person HUD because I'm playing in the first person template. If you guys have another name for your uh, first uh, first person out over here, me that's exactly what I went to get. And from here, you're gonna do a set. So get from as as first person out, you're gonna do a set hide HUD. Just set it up to true. And when you're done your uh, sequence, again, make sure to reset it. So I'm gonna do it with you guys just to show you guys what I mean. Is you you should roughly know how much your uh, your length of your sequences. For me, if I go inside the sequence, it's over here. I can check over here right away. If I go to the end, it's 660, 660 divided by 30, 600, so that's 20, 23, 22 seconds. So I know exactly that's the length of my, of my scene. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go inside, back to the level blueprint. I'm gonna do a delay of 22 seconds. And right when this is done, you're going to have this over here. You can drag from here, RER to make a reroute node, just to keep it clean. Set hide HUD to uh, false. And after that, you need to do this, Control C, Control V, and do a enable input. Just so your character can move afterward. If you've done all this right, everything should work perfectly. So now we have this, the scene is done, let's save everything, go inside the play, make sure you close sequencer so that you can literally see something. Press F11 to see your scene and Alt P, watch the show. So there you have it. Hope you like this. Like always, leave a like and subscribe if you like what you see. And you'd like to see more, of course. And in the following episodes, we're going to go back inside our Season 3. And let's, we're going to continue moving on. So now we have our second stage that we finish, And we want to transition to the third stage. To be able to do that, we're going to need a loading screen and a transition fade from the elevator scene inside the Season 2 finale. And that's what we're going to be working on next. So see you next time.